Hello and welcome to today's video. My name is Amanda Sandu. I'm the manager of examinations here at the College of Physiotherapists of Ontario. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you where to find important information to confirm the technology and room requirements about the Ontario clinical exam. I'll be demonstrating the platform demo so that you can practice using the exam delivery platform before your exam date. And lastly, I'll give you a sneak peek at what the live exam site actually looks like, since there are some key functional differences between what's available on the demo site and what is available on the live exam site. To start, let's look at the key documents that you'll need to access. At collegept.org, click on the Ontario Clinical Exam section of the website. There's tons of information to help guide your preparation for the exam itself, including the technology requirements. In the technology requirements, you'll see that you can download device tip sheets for Mac users as well as Windows users. Please carefully review the document based on the type of device that you'll be accessing the exam from to make sure that your device settings as well as your browser settings are correct to ensure a smooth experience on your exam day. Additionally, we have a full breakdown of all the technology requirements required for the exam, including setup. And then we have our room setup requirements which explicitly indicates what is required to be in the room, what is allowed to be within the room or optional, and then what is strictly prohibited from being within your exam space. Please review these documents carefully. Next up, I'll show you the demo site. The login credentials for the demo site you can find on our website, but I'll also post them here so that you can log on with me. Once you type in your credentials, click Login and the exam will download. For the demo, you just need to choose which exam to take. Your login credentials are set up to only work with the candidate version. If you click on Examiner, it actually won't work for you at all. So please click Candidate. There is no PIN. All you need to do is press Take Chosen Exam and the exam will download one more time. You're now within the demo site. You'll notice that you can't see any video and you won't be able to hear any audio, and that's because you're not connected to an examiner. So if you attempt to press the connect button, you will get an error. Don't worry, that's how the demo site is set up. I'll walk through some of the key features just to orient you towards the exam itself. You'll start in the live exam day exactly where you are in the demo site, which is the virtual waiting room. Within the virtual waiting room, you'll have two documents available to you, one that details instructions to candidates or things to be aware of during the exam that you can review as you're waiting for the exam to start. And then you'll also have an audio file where you can check to ensure that your audio is working. For the audio file, you can interact with it the same way you would interact with any video. So pressing the play button to hear the content, you can move forward or backwards in the content. You can mute or increase or decrease the sound. You can also click playback speed and make it go faster or slower. Please note that in the demo site, as well as the live exam, the download is disabled. If you are looking to review a document, click on the document. And then to read through the document, you can just use the inside scroll bar to scroll up and down. This is a singular page document. I can make the document full screen by toggling to full screen and I can toggle back to half screen by toggling using this button. I can also close the document by pressing the X. Another feature a lot of candidates are curious about is the notes feature. If you click the notes feature, you can type your notes here. Now in the demo site, you'll always be able to access the notes. However, in the live exam, you can start taking notes as soon as you enter case one or the exam officially starts. Once the exam officially starts, your examiner will instruct you to press next case which is in the upper right-hand corner here. When I press next case, it will take me to the first uh, case. Here, I can type any notes. Or if I want my notes to disappear, I just click the notes icon again. So click once to open it and another time to close it. This area here is my resource dashboard and will be where all of the documents that my examiner shares with me throughout the exam will appear. This is a two-page document. If I click on it, you'll now notice that I have a forward and backward button to turn the page. I can use the inside scroll bar to scroll down within the document I currently have open and press the next page button to turn the page. I can go back by pressing the previous page button or the backward arrow. If I wish to access the audio file or review any other document, 
there are two ways to do so. The first way is you can use the outside scroll bar to scroll down and view the other documents in your resource pane. From here, you can listen to your audio by pressing the play button. Or if you wish to close the document, you can press the X in the corner and then access your next document. You can continue to navigate through. Within the live exam, you have the virtual waiting room, two long cases, and 11 short vignettes. When you're all done the demo, click on the finish button, submit exam, and then you'll wanna press log out. You have successfully logged out of the demo site. Next, I'll take you through the live exam. Remember that you wanna access the live exam using Safari or Chrome only. Please don't use any other browser as Safari and Chrome will work the best. On the morning of your exam, you'll receive your login credentials. You'll also receive the link to access the exam site. Please note that the link for the live exam is different than the link for the demo exam. Once you see this page, you'll see a confirmation that you're officially logged in. Please do not navigate away from this page, press the logout or close it. There's also no pin. Once you're on this page, it means you've successfully logged into the exam. All you need to do now is wait until the exam officially starts. Once the exam officially starts, the exam will download one final time and then you'll be connected with your examiners as well as your proctor. It should take no more than two or three minutes to fully download. We can see the rate of progression of your download on our side of the system as we're monitoring the exam. If we notice that your download is taking too long or longer than those two or three minutes, the exams teams might directly call you. Please do answer so that we can best assist you. I'll start the exam now and you'll see it download. Notice how it's asking to access my camera and microphone. Any pop-ups you get, whether it's asking to allow to use your camera, your microphone, to share screen, or allow an upgrade to the platform, please do select yes and allow to ensure that the platform functions properly. Next, you'll be prompted to share your screen. You are required to share your screen. Click the OK button to allow screen sharing to occur and then press the allow button. For the purpose of today's demo, I'm going to be muting myself. In a live exam, please do not mute yourself. You are now in the virtual waiting room. I've logged in as an examiner just so you can see what it looks like when someone else is logged into the system. We'll start by looking at the features at the top of your screen and we'll work our way down. From the top down, you'll notice that you have three different icons that you didn't have available to you in the demo site. One is the microphone, the next is the camera, and the other is the speaker. You'll only see these icons if you have multiple sources that the platform could access to complete the exam. For example, if you have a headset like I do and your microphone is built into your computer, you will have the microphone icon. If you have a built-in webcam to your laptop and you have plugged into your computer an external camera, you'll see the camera icon. For today, I'll show you the camera icon. I have two cameras. One is my built-in webcam to my laptop and the other is an external one. You can see that I'm using my external webcam because it's what's selected in bold. If you're wearing a headset and you notice that the sound is going to your computer speakers, click on the speakers button and just double check that your headset is selected. The other piece I'll highlight is that the notes button is grayed out so I can't click it. That's because I'm in the virtual waiting room. If you remember, in the virtual waiting room, you cannot take notes. The notes button will become active as soon as the exam officially starts. If I work my way over to the right-hand side of my screen, you'll also notice that our next case and previous case buttons are also grayed out. This is because we're in the virtual waiting room and the exam has not officially started. These buttons are grayed out to make sure that you don't accidentally access exam information before the exam officially starts. Next up, you'll be able to see both of your examiners as well as yourself in the video bar. If you want to make it bigger, you can drag the bar down. And if you would like to make it smaller, you can drag the bar up. Dragging it up is especially helpful if you can find the camera distracting sometimes. You can't turn off your camera, just like you can't mute yourself. And note that you can see the entirety of your background. So there is no background blur function. 
Moving down one more level, we have our resource dashboard on the left-hand side of the page. Here you'll find your candidate instructions to read through, as well as an audio resource to test your audio if you need to. For testing purposes today, this is only four sections long, but as you may recall from the demo video, you'll see a total of 14 sections that you'll go through on live exam day. The first one being the virtual exam waiting room, the second two being the cases, and the last 11 being the vignettes, so that you can always know where you are in the exam. Lastly, I'll point out that in the virtual waiting room, there is no timing clock. Your examiners will let you know a few moments before the exam officially starts. All the timing information will be provided in the email that's sent to you on the morning of your exam, along with your login information. I'll draw your attention to the center of the screen here. I'm going to start the exam officially so that you'll be able to see what that timing bar actually looks like. As soon as the timer starts and the exam begins, you'll see that it counts down from three hours. It will count down all the way to zero. Please always use the center timing information when you're referencing how much longer you have in your exam. There is a separate timing feature up here, but it also includes time that examiners spend after you log off. So please only reference the time in the yellow timing bar. As soon as the exam begins, the first thing your examiner will do is ask you to navigate to the next case by clicking the next case button once. You'll notice how I've shifted to number two, section two. In this document, just like we saw in the demo, it is two pages long. To open the document, click on it once, use the inside scroll bar to scroll down the document, and then the next page button or the forward arrow to click to the next page and then use the inside scroll bar to read up and down in the document. To close the document, press the X. Or if you have the document open and you wish to access other documents in your resource dashboard, simply use the outside scroll bar and scroll down. From here, you can play your audio or access a different document. Speaking of different documents, throughout the exam, your examiner may provide you with additional information. If you keep your eyes to the bottom of the screen here, I'm going to have the examiner share some additional information. You'll notice that two files were shared, additional information in the format of an audio file and additional information in the format of a written document. Both of these documents, just like your initial case, contain the exact same information. It just depends on how you wish to consume the information, if you want to listen to it or read it or do both. If you wish to select a different document and you already have one open, Simply press the document and you'll notice the new document will open. Again, the inside scroll bar scrolls up and down within the document and the next page button is to turn the page. I can use the outside scroll bar to scroll down and listen to the document or access a different one. Throughout this whole time, I can use my notes and type them as I'm reading through different documents. Again, to close the notes, press the notes again and to open it, click the notes icon once. If I move to the next case, you'll notice my notes have disappeared. The notes are linked to each specific case. So with each case or vignette that you move to, your notes will become blank and you'll have tons of space to write all of your important information. Once you've completed your exam and have gone through all of the different pieces, your examiner will instruct you to log off, press the finish button, and then press submit exam. Your exam is now over. Please check on our website at collegept.org for information on when results for your exam will be released. If you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to the exams team. Thank you.